Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, or welcome to the channel if this is the first video you happen to stumble upon. Uh, I've got a special plant that is in bloom today that I'd like to share with you. Uh, this is one that I can't really move around a whole lot, so uh, it's one that I'm going to have to angle the camera for rather than hold up to the camera, uh, because it is quite a uh, large plant. This is a rather special and very easy to grow aroid that you may or may not have heard of. If you haven't, certainly one to look into trying. And that is Gonotopus boivinii, or the giraffe's knee aroid, also known as the sand arum. Uh, you can see the tops of the leaves here. Then you can follow the stalk down, and there's the flower all the way down to the pot. It is a nearly four foot tall plant right now, fully mature. They don't get much bigger than this, so when it comes to aroids, corpse flowers, things like that, this is actually a relatively uh, easy to contain one, unlike some of the other giants. Uh, these guys are named giraffe's knee because of this structure right here. You can see that swelling in the uh, pedial of the leaf that looks kind of like the knob of, well, a giraffe's knee. And with the mottled pattern, that kind of mimics the pattern of uh, a giraffe's coat, uh, you can kind of see the resemblance. Now these guys are a species native to the eastern coast of Africa in a relatively uh, tropical to warm subtropical areas and uh, they tend to grow in places where there is kind of a mild seasonal change in weather patterns uh, so during the rainy season of course it's wet these guys uh, grow out they branch out into these big uh, multi-part uh, leaves and yes believe it or not this is in fact one single leaf this is not multiple leaves on a stem. This is one leaf with a whole lot of leaflets. So, that is a leaf that is almost four feet across. And so they produce that. And then at the same time, which is a little bit different from some other aroids as well, is they will produce the flower stalk, which we can see here. So we have this long pale colored spathe, which is a modified bract uh, on the stalk that encloses the spadix. This is actually what releases the uh, pheromones and odors that attract pollinators. And then at the base of that, right here, is where we actually have all the individual flowers, because this is in fact an inflorescence of flower stalk, not a single flower on its own. So we can see at the top of the stalk there, those are male flowers that will at some point release pollen. I heard an edit here real quick because as it turns out I was a little off. Uh, in this species, unlike some other aroids, that uh, stalk sticking straight up out of the middle is not actually an additional part to the spadix that releases pheromones. That's actually an entire collection of male flowers that begins ripening a little later and will just crop dust the entire area with pollen. So all the female flowers are in the structure below that tall structure which is actually all male flowers. And all the little green buds down here are the female flowers awaiting pollination. Like with other aroids, this uh, actually ripens those different flowers at different times. Uh, it only just opened today so I'm not exactly sure when those will ripen, but usually it's the males will ripen first, the pollen will drop, and uh, hopefully some other pollinator will come along and pick that up and carry it to a different bloom. And then a day or two later, all the female flowers will ripen and become receptive so that that encourages cross-pollination. And then it'll produce these little berries that uh, have to break down before the seeds will actually germinate because the berry itself contains germination inhibitors. So that's all happening during the wet season. And then when uh, soils begin to dry out, these all die back into a tuber that is way down here in the soil. That tuber usually grows to around mm, between five and seven inches across before it starts to divide. 
Uh, I've actually got a second plant that's back in the corner over there. You can see the mottled stalk in the background, and it's also actually got a flower as well. It's a slightly smaller plant than this one, but uh, same age because it came from a division. And so it'll die back during the dry season, and it'll remain that way until the rains come again. So these, again, are a fairly easy plant to grow. Uh, the soil can actually kind of remain moist at all times, uh, drier during the uh, their dormant period, of course, which in my experience thus far doesn't actually last that long. They could stay dormant for a couple of months, but in my experience, oftentimes once these leaves die back, they're already working on producing their next bud. So usually I only see them in a dormant state for uh, maybe a couple of weeks at most before I get a new leaf starting to grow out. So uh, you need kind of a moderate sized pot, something around maybe a foot across so that you can actually uh, retain the tuber in there as well as uh, when it begins to divide, you don't want uh, those new divisions breaking the pot before you can actually get them out and separate them. And then the soil should be a relatively coarse, well-draining mix uh, that has a fair bit of uh, nutrients in it, whether that be uh, time-release fertilizers or I actually use Osmocote pellets as time release myself along with a bit of extra um, phosphorus rich fertilizer because these guys like that for building their tubers and producing the flowers. So that needs to be well draining so that it remains moist but it doesn't actually remain uh, like soggy or really damp so you would want just enough moisture in there to kind of keep the plant happy because if you get it too moist you're at risk of rotting the tuber and thereby the rest of the plant. So just moist enough, well drained, very rich and that will allow these guys to grow well and then uh, again since they are an East African plant they prefer fairly warm temperatures so uh, anything above 65 to about 95 degrees Fahrenheit uh, 95 is probably pushing it a little bit but they will tolerate that and they will grow up into these big, beautiful, happy leaves. Now, when it comes to propagating, again, these plants, you can wait until they divide naturally, or every single one of these little leaflets has a bit of a tendency to readily break off the plant. And when they do that, if they land on soil, they will often begin to root and grow out. So, yeah, a good windstorm might knock all of these off if it's outside somewhere and you could end up with dozens and dozens of little plantlets all at once. This actually lends this plant to being somewhat of a weed. So uh, if you live in a particularly tropical area, you might want to check whether or not you're allowed to grow this plant since it does have potentially invasive tendencies. But if you're like me and you live in a very um, temperate environment where you can only grow them indoors, not so much an issue because you can control where the leaves fall and if you decide to keep them around. But certainly if you are relatively new to growing uh, aroids, uh, this is a great one to work with because it's fairly tolerable a lot of, of a lot of conditions and quite attractive at the same time and fast growing. I've only had this thing for a couple of years and it's already begun to flower. So that's about it for this plant. Uh, it's not one that I have available for sale on my website just yet, although uh, with as weedy as it has the potential to be, I imagine it won't be uh, too long before I start really propagating it, although I do certainly have some of its relatives, things like uh, Amorphophilus, the corpse flowers, the true corpse flowers, or Penelia and some other species. Some of those are usually available on the site as they uh, go dormant and I'm able to dig up the tubers. but. Uh, if you like seeing educational materials like this and you'd like to help support production of further videos or blogs or other articles, uh, consider becoming a member on our Patreon page. Uh, that's patreon.com slash hcarlton. Uh, you get early access to videos. There's contests for seeds there that I do every month. Uh, there's merchandise that's exclusive to the site and more. Uh, if you can't do a monthly subscription like that, we also take uh, one-time donations through coffee.com slash Carlton Carnivores. The link for that will be in the description under the video. Uh, if you uh, just want some plants that 
Uh, you can also purchase those, again, at the website. I've got, again, the Aroids, but I also, as you can see behind me, do a lot of carnivorous plants, so I usually have things like that for sale. I have other wildflower seedlings and so on, and every little bit of that also helps go towards production of edu ed eh, educational materials. Excuse me. Uh, if you'd like to see more little photos and tidbits and uh, little articles, I am always posting things on social media, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook at Carlton Carnivores. But until next time, I'm Hawk and Carlton, and this is Carlton Carnivores. <laughs>